What's going on everyone, Spencer here. In this video, I'm gonna break down this insanely quick lateral move from Marner. We'll look at exactly what it is he's doing, and of course, how we can replicate it ourselves with some on and off ice drills. So make sure to stick around to the end for all that. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is an advanced mechanic, but with practice, anyone can learn it. If I can learn it, you can learn it too. It's that simple. Now, the first thing that everyone's gonna say is, he shifts his weight, and of course, he does. He starts with all his weight on his right foot and shifts all his weight to his left foot. Now, although that is true, that is not what gives him this insanely quick lateral movement. That comes from three things. The first is an ankle collapse. So you can see when he shifts his weight to his left foot, his ankle starts out in a neutral position with very little Y angle. And then he immediately collapses it in, leading to this aggressive Y angle we see at the end. The second is heel pressure. Now it's hard to see from this angle, but you can kind of tell that his toe is slightly up and his heel is dug more into the ice. His heel is also the last part of the blade touching the ice. So we know that he is cutting with his heel. The third, and this is what we're gonna primarily focus on in this video, is the hip drop. So if we look at right before he shifts his weight, his hips are completely level. And then as soon as he establishes weight on that left foot, his right hip completely drops. So his hips are level and then drops. Level, drops. You also notice at the same time that his hip drops, he internally rotates that right hip. You can see that from his legs slightly turning in as the hip drops. So overall, that puts him in a position like this, where his hips drop, his knees are also tilted as a result, his shoulders remain level, and his chest is facing away. And that gives him this bow-like look. We also see the same move from McDavid, where his hip drops, and he ends up in the same position as Marner. We also see the same move from Dalin, and more recently from Bedard in his OT winner versus Slovakia. Now what's happening in all these examples is as their ankle collapses and hip drops, their Y angle, both at the ankle and lower leg level, decrease. And at the same time, their mass displacement increases. Mass displacement being how far their center of mass is away from their point of ground contact. That, combined with heel pressure, takes them on a tighter and sharper arc with more speed coming out because they're using gravity and momentum to propel themselves laterally versus having to push. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I'm gonna have a full video going in depth on mass displacement and how to get McDavid level lean. So make sure to subscribe for that. Now it's time to replicate this move. So we're first gonna focus on the overall body positioning and hip drop. For that, we're gonna start with a variation of the Gota drop-in. To start, find somewhere to balance on like a wall or a barbell. Next, you're gonna stand on one leg and internally rotate the other by turning your foot to point in. You're then gonna soften your knee just a bit and drop your hip, all while rotating your chest the other way. So overall, you should be in a position like this. See any similarities? Yep, that's the exact same position we saw with Marner. Now, in order for your hip to drop, you need to relax it. You wanna feel like your hip is being pulled to the ground and your leg is loose and dangling. You may also feel a nice stretch in your opposite glute, which is perfect. If you got that, great. Now try to sit in that position and get your hip lower and lower by relaxing it and keep feeling like it's being pulled down lower and lower. And don't forget to always do both sides. Once you've taken a mental note of that feeling, try getting in and out of it. So stand straight, lift your leg up and then drop. Dropping your hip, softening your knee and rotating your chest all at the same time. You can also sit in your heel to simulate heel pressure. Next, we're gonna add a little fall to simulate mass displacement and using momentum to move us laterally. So we're gonna get in that same position and then slowly teeter our way to the side. Use your discretion here and be safe. It's a little controlled fall, to not go crazy. For extra feel, you can do skater bounds, but with the intention of dropping your hip and rotating your chest every time you land. Again, you could sit into your heel to feel the heel pressure. If you wanna take it even a step further, you can add a stutter and some stick handling. Lastly, we'll do one ankle collapse drill to get the feel for that. For this, you'll stand with your feet straight and your ankles neutral. You're then gonna roll and collapse your ankle in just like this. Again, make sure to do both sides. Now, none of these drills are mandatory. You can do some of them, you can do all of them, you can do none of them. They're only meant for you to get the feel so you can then replicate that feel on the ice. So now that we have that feel, let's take it to the ice. First, we're gonna prime our ankles with a moving ankle collapse auxiliary drill. This drill is essentially the exact same we did off the ice. Simply get a little bit of a moving start, glide with both feet neutral, and roll and collapse your ankle in. 
what you'll notice is that your foot automatically makes a C cut without you having to do anything. At this point, you're now ready to give it a go. I recommend starting with a wide stutter or a wide corkscrew to hip drop. Because in a wide position, you have automatic low Y angle and automatic mass displacement. Just imagine if you unweighted one foot, your center of mass would be here and your point of ground contact here, and boom, mass displacement without doing anything. Now, although you mostly see this move on the backhand side, make sure to always practice both. The more options you have, the better player you can be. On the forehand side, it will be the exact same thing as the backhand. The only difference is that you likely won't turn your chest. Once you're comfortable with that, you can add a cross under out for extra lateral movement, like we saw from Marner and McDavid, or an outside edge roll like Dalian and I did, or even a shuffle like we see from Bedard. You can also play with how you enter it. You can enter with a stutter, a corkscrew, cross under one way and cut back the other way. Really, the possibilities are endless. And so that's it. You just learned what we call Train 2.0, the soft hip. Finally, some last tips and tricks. As always, do not push. The lateral movement should come solely from the ankle collapse, hip drop, heel pressure, and lateral fall. That's it. Two is relax. In order for your hip to drop and ankle collapse, you need to relax those muscles. And that's what makes this move so challenging at speed. And lastly, if you're starting with a cross under one way and cutting back the other way, you want to step out wide. That's going to give you that instant Y angle and mass displacement like we talked about earlier. The last variation you could try is instead of lifting your foot, you can drag your inside edge. And then, oh wait, that's just a soft drag. Yes, this is the exact same movement pattern as the soft drag. The only difference is that you're not dragging your inside edge toe. In fact, the hip drop you just learned is not only used in the soft hip and soft drag, but in movements like the ten and two, the cross under, the forward stride, even on your shots. So this one skill will give you feels that you can then translate to all those other mechanics. So try it out and if you do, tag me on Instagram and I'll give you a shout out. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you want to see how you can combine the soft hip to create magic, then you're going to want to watch this video right here. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.